This arrived in the post today. This is a, a Philips, uh, what we British we called um, a wobulator. Well, it's basically a RF frequency generator, sweep generator, um, designed to uh, design for FM radio. Really, um, bought a sort of spares or repair. Um, I don't know what condition inside it's like. I haven't looked yet. Um, but accordingly, it was tested on the 14th. So. If you believe that, it should still work. Um, yep, yeah, and it was function tested as well. So let's have a quick look inside it and see what it's like. It's in pretty filthy condition outside. It's got a couple of sort of knobs that are sort of being burnt by. It looks like a soldering on or something. Um, but it's all there. There's a there's some trim missing on the on the side panels of the top top cover. That's not the end of the world. So let's just have a quick look inside and see what we've got. Um, Basically, all this does is a similar thing to the uh, Advance does, uh, but probably does it a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, and it's basically the same as this, if you look, Packard as well. It's just a sweep generator. Um, but uh, I was intrigued. I only, only paid a couple of pounds for it, so I'm not too worried about if it works or not. But I'm intrigued to see what's inside and uh, if we can get it to work. So let's have a look inside. Well, it's pretty dusty and dirty. It doesn't look like it's got wet or anything. And this is obviously the, the oscillator board inside. It's all pretty clean inside, actually. Um, just a bit, a bit of blue dust. So I suppose the thing to do is um, power it up and have a look, see what it's like. I've actually got the uh, the other Hewlett Packard storage scope down at the moment because I've been working on the. Um, the HP um, LCR meter. I was needing to look at some waveforms that were uh, very low frequency but quite complicated. So I needed something that would uh, hold it on the, on the on the screen. Whereas the digital scope is ideal for that. And an analog isn't isn't that great for doing things like that. So let's just have a look. See if we can get any outputs from it. And if so, then we'll maybe looking into a give it a bit of a clean up and see if it's any see if it's calibrated or not. So. Plug this into the HF output of the thing and switch it on and see what happens. It's worth just checking to make sure it's around 240 volts. I'm sure it is because someone's told me it was what he's uh, it was come from a, a, a British workshop somewhere, so not too concerned about that. Okay, what we've got here? Oh, god. Looks like someone's soldered the wire onto the soldered the wire onto the IEC connector. Can you believe someone would do that? These IEC connectors are the most common connector around, and someone soldered a wire to it, obviously because they didn't have the right connector. That says a lot about the state of the of the unit, really. So let's just remove that so bit of solder. The oven's warming up, and then we'll clean that up and we'll pair it up and have a look. It all looks. Pretty intact inside. I suppose whilst we're waiting for the iron to warm up, we can whip the bottom off and just check the bottom and make sure there's no nothing nasty in there that's burnt or anything. Um, and then it'll probably just be a case of uh, tidying the tidying the metal work up and uh, giving a good clean, really. Bound to need contact clean, uh, cleaner to clean the switches and things like that. Um, that's the base off. So this is obviously the uh, the RF output side, which is the pot, the sealed pot. It's all looking pretty clean in there. Give it a bit of a brush out to get any loose dust out. But uh, no, that's not too bad. Just a bit of dust on it, just. To Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll move that piece of solder that some idiots put onto the connector. Get the solder braid. I never understand this. Is most red. I mean, all they most people who have these sort of plugs on, on their kettles. Why someone could have gone into a kitchen and got a bloody mains plug to fit it? I don't know, but uh, obviously there must have been some reason for it. So we can remove that. Solder. Okay, I'm gonna just 
the squirt of freezer so it doesn't damage the uh, plastic. I should be able to put a plug on it now. Nope, still won't fit. Oh, we do the other side as well. Okay. I suppose that makes sense. They would have soldered both connections. It's funny, you think of sort of a piece of equipment like that, someone would have done the job properly, but obviously even people who work on electronics will still do a bodge if they can get away with it. I'm sure this is a normal IEC lit plug, it just... There you go, big lump of wire solder to it, that's why I couldn't get the, the thing on. Let's cut that down, actually. Okay, let's try again. Okay, plugged in. Turn it on, it lights up. The first thing to do is see if we can get any response out of it. We've got something. So that's looking promising. Let's just check our triggering because I think I might be in. No, that's okay. Oh, there you go. So, that, so it's the frequencies. Looks like it's working fine. That's, that's a good start. Um, so what have we got? We've got internal air modulation. Okay. One kilohertz. I'm not so sure about that. Well, there we go. Looks like that's possibly working okay. So let's have a look at our frequencies. Turn the modulation off. So modulation is off. Let's pull up the frequency on here. Uh, let's have a look. Display, no. Time frequency, here we go. 700 kilohertz. So that's 0.3 to 1 meg. So 0.3 to 1 meg. There, so this should be 500 kilohertz. Looks like we've got some sort of modulation on still. That to external, that to external. There's a bit of noise there or something, but uh, it certainly seems to be working. Let's try to the what this calibration does. Oh, I think this is for like it's got a, sort of like a not a marker, but it's got a you can adjust the two frequencies together to sort of like a get. I think it's got a crystal calibrator in it, so you can get a very precise um, reading on the uh, on the on the on the meter. So this is our. So if I press this. Alright, we're working at the higher frequencies so well. What the hell is that? Okay, let's put the levels a bit. I don't know if that's right or not. I need to read the manual on it, but it's it's obviously doing something. It's going to need going through. I think turn the wobulator off. So this is the wobulator width by the looks of it. That's no modulation.
Well, so it sort of, so it seems to work. I'll uh, we'll get it sort of cleaned up a bit, and I'll um, I'll do a calibration on it and see if I can get it to work properly. I'm not too sure about the high frequencies. It looks like maybe the uh, performance drops off when you get to higher frequencies, but uh, I haven't got bandwidth limit on, have I? Yep, that will do it. Okay, I've still got some output there. Not very really strong. It's very noisy. It's got a lot of noise breakthrough. But it seems to be doing something, so we'll, uh, we'll I'll get a manual and we'll go through it and have a look, see what else we can do with it, see if it's if it's going to be viable or not.